everybody, Dave Nassie here. So what I want to talk about today is how we can work on our alternate picking, but use a metronome and maybe make that thing a little bit more fun. Sometimes people don't like working with the metronome. It's kind of annoying. But we're going to take some popular patterns, we're going to use some easy scale shapes, and we're going to break it down in a way that will make it more comfortable and hopefully get you to that next level. Um, for some of you pickers out there, this might be more of an intermediate to advanced style of approach, but I truly believe conceptually this works good for the early levels of learning how to do your alternate picking, so please check this out and I think you'll find this to be helpful. So I'm going to use the D Mixolydian scale shape. This is in the key of G and it looks like this. That's 10, 12, 14 for the low strings. I'm going to go 11, 12, 14 on the third string, 12, 13, 15, 12, 14, 15 on that high E string. So we use different muscles for each group of string. We're going to take a popular lick that looks just like this and isolate it in the usage of the A and the E strings, the D and the G, and the B and the E. This pattern looks like this. That pattern has been used a lot. I love it. A lot of people know it and it's really, really effective. That's starting with a downstroke on this fourth string and exaggerating that upstroke on the third string, that F sharp. Now, if you hit that with a downstroke, that's totally cool. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be all good. What we're gonna do to start this out though is we're gonna actually start with the note on the third string and then put it in a metronome time. Now, for myself, um, I have this thing set at 147. And this is how I like to warm up and get started with these things. The difference is, instead of going I'm going to start with an upstroke, and I'm going to put all of my notes in between that pulse. So, now for me, I like to divide them up into groups of four because I feel like I'm just kind of like working out some muscles, and it's easier for me to wrap my head around making sure that. Um, I'm just kind of isolating the usage of each group, like I said. Standing up and sitting, it feels pretty different. Um, we can do that at any tempo, and all you're really shooting to do is get all of those notes in before each one of those beats. Again. And we can do that with the B and the E, the D and the G, and the E and the A strings. Now to talk about another lick that we can do just really quickly because I like to have one or two ideas or more that work in this same kind of fashion where I can practice them this way and keep a sense of evenness in my playing and I'm just kind of isolating this usage of the metronome and trying to do it a little bit different. We're going to start from the high E string and I start with an upstroke. So one more time. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just playing each you know, string twice, except for the high and the E string. And when I speed that up without a metronome, it feels good, I like it, but I like to be able to push myself and maybe have a pulse to help me along. each one separately. So I can start out like this, two, three, four, two, three, four, three, four, and just try to work these things in. As you can see, it kind of got, you know, fired up there at the end. So the difference is not just taking, but taking more the approach of saying, I can work all those notes in between the pulse and I can do them in different groups of strings. So I hope you find that to be helpful. It's a really simple way to take a lick that is hard to do and it is advanced in approach but put a spin on it. That's the most important thing. Working with a metronome at times can be difficult so hopefully you will find that to be helpful with a common lick that we see all the time.